So, we are going to start with lecture 10 and we are going to talk about uh, the instrumentation part of a scanning electron microscope. A scanning electron microscope is usually a system which can be compared to an optical microscope, uh, but the instrumentation part is slightly more complicated. And uh, then when we talk about it, uh, let us have a diagrammatical representation to understand this. So, if you basically use a light microscope, uh, uh, usually you should see through this direction and then the sample is illuminated via a bulb or a light source uh, at the bottom. Okay? And then we have got the specimen which is kept somewhere here, somewhere in the middle. In a scanning electron microscope, the sample is kept at the bottom where the electrons are incident and the backscattered electrons and other electrons which are there produced are getting detected by a detector and then it is studied after connecting it to an electronic system to get an image. So, in case of a light microscope, your eye is the detector, here the electron detectors are working, the scintillation detector, the photomultiplier tube and so on. We do have a lot of lenses here, the projection lenses, okay. these are the projection, uh, the lenses which actually focuses the light, the objective lens, the projection lens, the condenser lens and so on. Here in order to focus the electron, we are actually using a field as such, uh, it might be an electromagnetic field. And then we can actually apply some kind of field to it actually to control the beam. So, we have got this focusing lens and then condenser lens and so on. So, this is the comparison here and then the source is light here and then here the source is nothing but the electron source. So, we are going to look into more specifically the details of what are the electron source and which has what benefit and so on. Okay. So, these are some of the important studies that we are going to do. But you have to remember that uh, the electron uh, the in, in a SEM will actually never form a real image of the sample. In general, when we look through a microscope, we are looking into a real image, but here we are not looking into a real image, it is basically a representation. Okay? Depending on how many uh, backscattered electrons are getting uh, accumulated in the detector and that basically sends an image, it gives you a sense of depth and so on, which we have seen in our last lecture. So, this increased magnification, what does it mean? So, if you are scanning this much region, okay, at a point of time and if you are scanning this much region at a point of time, definitely this scanning will have better magnification. Okay? So, the increased magnification is produced by decreasing the size of the area scanned on the specimen. So, we can actually keep on changing the specimen's uh, magnification depending on the need. So, the what are the major components of uh, scanning electron microscope? Now, we will shift totally into scanning electron microscope, we will stop the comparison not right now. And this is the basic layout uh, when you actually are asked to draw in your exams uh, with the pen and paper of course, not the online exams I am talking about right now. Uh, you have to basically make a block diagram of it. Okay? You really do not need to put a 3D diagram, you can just make a block diagram what comes after the other. Okay? So, we have got the electron gun which is called the electron emitter gun. So, this is here okay? and then we have got the vacuum system. Now, this entire thing is actually put inside a column. Okay? this entire thing is put inside a column and then this uh, the space where the electron is generated or where the electrons are detected, okay, both of them are placed in vacuum and there is a specific need for that which are going to come later. Okay. And then we have got the water chilling system because it generates a lot of heat, we need to keep it cool. Okay. And then we have got the specimen chamber. So, we have the specimen here which is actually kept in a separate chamber. So, this is the specimen chamber. And then of course, we have the detector. So, we have the detector and then this is the imaging system that we have. So, this is a very simple layout or setup of a, a scanning electron microscope. Okay? And then uh, let us take one by one uh, the parts one by one at a time. Uh, the electron gun is actually one of the most important things that you should know theoretically okay? uh, from examination point of view as well. And if you are operating an instrument in the near future, you should know what kind of system gives what kind of uh, advantages okay? depending on what kind of electron gun it is using. So, an electron gun is a simple uh, setup which generates a beam of electrons. So, you need a beam of electrons and you can extract electrons in two ways. Okay? Once either you heat, okay? either you heat else you apply a field. So, this is something which we are also going to see and depending on that there is a category of scanning electron microscope. Now, the simplest and the cheapest electron gun from where the electrons are generated okay, should be made up of a material. So, the simplest and cheapest and in fact widely used is something which is the tungsten ware to produce electron. 
so we heat the tungsten wire so we heat it okay so we heat the tungsten wire to produce the electron but then if you want a better setup you use a more expensive uh, crystal uh, as an electron source which is nothing but lanthanum hexaboride so lanthanum hexaboride is used okay it should be b6 sorry b6 la b6 now this lanthanum hexaboride is heated or we use a large electric potential so if we use a field that means we are using a large electric potential to pull the electrons out of them i'll tell you what are the advantages of lanthanum hexaboride later and the electrons are accelerated in an energy range typically of 1 to 40 kilo volts so if you actually applying some voltage the electrons can be accelerated within the system so there are three main components of the electron gun very important okay a hot wire called the filament or the cathode or the electron emitter okay so basically it will emit the electron and it is called the filament now this filament might be a tungsten wire it might be a lanthanum hexaboride okay depending on how much you can afford and then it has got something which is called the wenelt wenelt grid okay it's a basically a cap okay it's basically a cap with a gapping the image i have in the later okay and then we have got an anode so which is nothing but positive in nature so this anode will attract the excess electrons of the electron which i don't want to pass through okay to be used in the experiment so if you consider a thermal emission uh, the word thermal means you are heating the filament the tungsten filament is heated okay quite hot by filament current so you basically apply a, a, a huge amount of current as a result of which uh, the filament gets heated and when the filament gets heated it emits electrons which are nothing but thermal electrons because of the temperature now these emitted electrons are those who actually have overcome the work function energy of the material so if you remember photoelectric effect uh, from your earlier classes or lower classes okay you know that actually if you have a metal surface you allow some uh, radiation to fall on it okay it can actually eject an electron some electromagnetic wave can actually eject an electron so if it ejects an electron uh, uh, it cannot eject an electron for any radiation the radiation should have certain energy okay and the amount of energy which is needed to overcome the energy which uh, can take out the electron from the system is basically called the work function so the emitted electron are those which have overcome the work function energy of the material so this is a typical diagram of a electron gun okay simplified diagram we basically have Mm, uh, uh, anode and a cathode okay the well net cylinder we can see is there so this is basically the well net cylinder we have got an insulator disc okay and then we have got the tip here so this is the material from which the electrons are getting emitted now this material might be a tungsten filament it might be lanthanum hexaboride which is costly or it might be a field emission gun i will tell you about field emission gun later but you can see that there is a difference in design this is basically nothing but v shape this is having a tip which is not as sharp compared to the field emission gun so you can see the field emission gun the tip is very very sharp so the number of electron which it can uh, generate is much lesser and more focused okay so the tip of a tungsten wire uh, that means this is about 10 micrometer in diameter so the diameter is around 10 micrometer okay which just enlarged here whereas the tungsten crystal for the field emission gun so this here we are actually using tungsten crystal okay so tungsten crystal which is used in the field emission gun is sharpened to a much narrower tip so it is in the nanometer range and not in the micrometer range okay so if we just look into the theory part what happens is uh, the well net cap sits an anode okay so it basically is connected with an anode and anode is obviously positively charged and it attracts the electrons away from the filament so we have this which is positively charged so if you are getting any electron which is straying here this is actually getting attracted towards this because this is positive and this is nothing but the electrons which is flowing towards it okay so we have to remember this that the filament if it's broken then no electrons can be produced so it is very important uh, that this part is not broken okay this is should work fine this is also one of the uh, uh, changeable parts of a SEM instrument if this is broken that this needs to be changed uh, so that the scanning electron microscope can start working again it does happen practically so the hole in the anode so what do i mean by the hole we are talking about this particular part okay the hole in the anode allows a fraction of electrons to continue down the column through the lenses 
to produce a smaller more cohesive beam i think this is self explanatory so this hole will actually generate the electron beam which will flow downwards okay and then that electron that strikes the anode so obviously there are some electron will strike the anode will actually be returned to the high power voltage via ground so basically this is grounded this part is grounded and then the electron which strikes here okay will basically go back into the system okay and which is grounded the portion of the beam that leaves the anode through the hole is termed as the beam current so what is the beam current the beam current is this part so this is the beam current that we have why current because electrons are there which is flowing so basically this is nothing but your beam current so there are two types of electron source as i told uh, told you uh, one can be generated using temperature so uh, which is basically called a thermo ionic type so in general any kind of electron source will have three main parts uh, these are the filament the wellnet cap and the anode so uh, if you consider a lanthanum hexaboroid which is actually a thermo ionic type electron source okay and it's a crystal of course it will have a refractory ceramic material with a high melting point the melting point is very high so if the temperature is uh, taken to a very high value uh, still till then the system will be conserved the lanthanum hexaboride will survive okay because it has got a high melting point that is also one of the reason why it is used and it is heated to generate electrons because for getting the electrons out of the system we need to apply a enormous amount of temperature now what are the advantage the advantage is it will basically have a long usable lifetime compared to the thermo ionic filament so the lifetime is uh, much uh, higher for lanthanum hexaboride compared to the tungsten filament that we are talking about so this was thermo ionic now what about field emission electron source here we are applying a very high electric field to generate the electrons so uh, what happens is a feg usually we call it feg and if if you have uh, come across the term fesem okay so the term is fesem it stands for field emission scanning electron microscopy so till now we have seen sem now we are also talking about fesem so what happens in feg it uses a pointed crystal single crystal tungsten wire so please remember that was only the tungsten wire and this is basically a single crystal tungsten wire and the filament is not heated here so very important it is not heated by a filament current what we do is the electrons are pulled off the cold filament the filament is cold and we are applying a strong electrostatic field called an extraction voltage so we apply a very high voltage to extract the electrons from there okay so what is the advantage here see one of the important part is it will definitely have a long life because if you are not heating a, a filament to extract what you want uh, in this case the electrons uh, definitely the mechanical stress on this will be much lesser okay as a reason because of which the long life is obviously expected and then it will have a much smaller electron virtual source size as you can see that the uh, diameter is very less so obviously the that adds to the smaller electron uh, source okay it will generate high current and very high brightness and then the energy spread will be less so that means uh, if if we have a narrow beam okay and if you consider a thermal one this might not be having a narrow beam this might be actually spread out in more uh, distance more area so these advantages makes the field emission scanning electron microscope a high resolution machine for high magnification work so in the updated work of research uh, if you are going to publish a paper in some good journals usually sem images are not accepted they are expecting fesem which you gives you more detail of what you have done okay so uh, in even in field emission uh, emission uh, electron source there are two types one is called the cold field emission gun which is basically kept at room temperature and provided with an electric field it basically provides most coherent source of high resolution secondary electron imaging but this is basically least appropriate for energy dispersive x ray analysis so if you remember when we talked about x ray or eds we talked about uh, some signals which can be generated from the sample some x rays which can actually tell you what are the components of the sample if you want to do that which is attached to a sam instrument uh we cannot do it very efficiently using a cold field emission what we do is we use a hot field emission so hot field emission it means it is specifically named as a short key field emission gun uh it means that we are combining the field and a heated uh, uh cathode okay a heated cathode so that means the temperature is kept high for the cathode and at the same time 
the electric field is also applied. So it is basically a combined effect of temperature and the field. So what are its advantages of the hot field? It basically gives a better beam current stability, less stringent vacuum requirements. So when you actually use a scanning electron microscope, you need a good amount of vacuum to be created. For the simple reason that I do not want any other process to take place if there are any other gases. For example, even if there is air, the electron might lead to if the temper, uh, energy is sufficiently high, it might lead to ionization and all which I do not need. So basically, I need a vacuum system. But if you have a heat, hot heat field and as well, uh, a heated uh, filament along with the field, uh, this will actually result in less vacuum requirement. So I do not need a very strong vacuum there. There is no need of periodic emitter flashing. So what happens is if you have a cold uh, emitter, okay, if you have got a cold cathode, you need to keep on heating it on a day-to-day -day basis so that the uh, system is active. Okay, but if if you consider a hot field emission uh, gun, uh, we usually don't need to do that. Okay, so that is uh, very important. So SAM is such an instrument that you cannot keep it uh, shut down for a long time. Okay. It should be used on a regular basis that is very important for keeping the instrument up and running. The majority of the high resolution field emission scanning electron microscope use short key emitter. So this is one of the uh, mostly used uh, emitters. Okay? But then we have to remember that obviously it comes at a higher cost also because this is using additional uh, uh, provisions, okay? additional setup. So, if you just look into this uh, table of comparison of the different electron guns okay, or the different material which is used as a cathode in the electron guns, uh, uh, the, uh, we can see that uh, the tip of the field emission micro, uh, field emission type uh, which is basically a tungsten crystal is the smallest which is just 5 nanometer compared to 30,000 or 10,000 nanometers of uh, tungsten or a length, uh, lanthanum uh, hexaborite. Okay. On the other hand, if you consider a short key type, uh, this also has got a much lesser diameter in the range of 20 nanometer. Brightness, so that means uh, it will say how much electron is incident per unit uh, centimeter square per angle steridian. The steridian is a measure of a solid angle. Okay. So, if you consider a 3D system, obviously it is a 3D system Okay, and then we are talking about the steridian here. And then we can see that the brightness is more or less the same, okay. It is not very different here, okay. But then the energy spread. So, energy spread uh, is also a very important factor if you get want to get a very high resolution image. So, you can see that this is having a good resolution, this also has a good resolution. There is always a, 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 a give and take relationship, okay. Always there is a balance between resolution and magnification and so on. Operating lifetime, I need the material to last for a very, very, very long time. So, this is 50 hours much less, this is 1000 hours ok, but this is the best field emission 12 months, more than 12 months in fact. We are not using temperature, there is no mechanical wear and tear and it is much better. This is also acceptable 9 months, more than 9 months, it is fine, right. So, that means if you are using the system on a daily basis, we can keep on using it, ok. So, this is the am amount of time that it can be used, ok. So, it means it is not that it will last for 12 months and after that it will get over. No, that is not the fact. The fact here is operating lifetime, ok. So, you can operate it this much time, ok. So, it is very important. And then vacuum. So, how much vacuum is needed in torque? So, you can see this is 10 to the power minus 4 to the power into 10 to the power minus 5, ok. This is to the power, ok. Please note this, please note this. I am going to mistyping here. But you see here, Mm, in the field emission microscope, we have this, okay, these values are there. Now, these are some typical values, it is not mandatory that this much should be the vacuum, even at lower vacuum, you actually can get the result, okay. But then this is good, okay, because more the vacuum, better the results, okay. Then the temperature of uh, the cathode, if you consider, and uh, the temperature, this will be minimum because it is at room temperature and others. Uh, we have the tungsten hairpin which is basically having the maximum uh, temperature of the cathode that should be achieved to extract the electron. In length of it is around 1500 range and short key type also the range remains more or less the same. But here we are using the field also along with the temperature. Okay. There is something which is called filament saturation. So, by the term saturation, I hope you understand that uh, it will stop giving out more current. Okay? So, it is not that I can keep on increasing the temperature or I can increase keep on increasing the field and I will keep on getting more and more current. Well, that is not true. 
the more current uh, that is put through the filament the greater the emission of electron that is fine but then there is a point which is reached where the emission is maximum and then you get no more additional electrons okay this is called the saturation usually we don't do that okay but we can actually have that saturation point what happens is putting more current through the filament after this point does not increase electron emission in fact it shortens the lifetime of the filament or even may break it prematurely so so i don't want that i want it to uh, last for a longer period so the people who are actually using these instruments um, are quite experienced they know uh, the input requirements okay so that is very important to maintain the longevity so i'm not going to go into vacuum requirements for now in the next class we are going to talk about in more detail about the vacuum requirements that's all for today thank you